Let's talk about ideas. A good idea is the beginning of a brand new journey, or a brand new venture, or a brand new product. Ideas are the fuel of creativity, and there is a deep well of such ideas within all of us. It's largely untapped, but it's there for us to use all our lives. We need to know how to access it. When I was 10 years old, my father gave me a beautiful blue book. It had a nice, pristine cover, smart-looking jacket, 300 pages empty, full of possibilities. And he gave it to me and said, fill this up with your ideas. I was 10 years old. He's, I said, ideas? What do you mean, ideas? He said, ideas, things that come to your mind, fill it up. And I'm still staring at his face. So he says, ideas, you know, the things that come to your mind at odd times, possibilities, what ifs, uh, things to do in the summer, places you want to go, things you want me to buy for you, uh, com comic, you know, characters, adventure stories, fill it up, run with it. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I ran with it. The first few pages I filled with doodles, cartoons, uh, funny looking aliens, um, dragons, monsters, rocket ships, that kind of stuff. And a few more pages down, things got a little more coherent. Cartoon strips, comic book characters of my own making, adventure stories, storylines for feature films, potential game ideas. And I would actually go off and make these uh, comic books. I'd staple them together and send it to my friends. And get a huge joy of it. A few more pages down, things got even more interesting and intriguing. Fantastic machines, weird devices, mango shooters, big hit of that summer, was a device to bring down mangoes, ripe mangoes, without harming them, most of them. What I, didn't know, what I didn't realize at that time was this beautiful blue book. It used to look like a beautiful blue book. <laughs> this beautiful blue book had kick-started in me a desire for a pursuit of ideas all my life. It defined who, who I am. By the time I was in college, I was, my ideas were gelled or um, were around science, technology, and politics. I wanted to be an idea person. I wanted to be a purveyor of ideas, to be in the idea business. I decided I wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist. I started Short Circuit, a wonderful uh, science fiction cartoon column about a robot and his inventor in the Indian Express, one of the largest newspapers of India, millions of subscribers. I was a freshman in college, this was a big deal. And on campus, my status as nerd, nerd number one was, was full, was ready. <laughs> the deal was this, I would, send them, I would need to send them two cartoon strips a week. One for the editor to choose to publish, the other for the editor to, cho to choose to throw away. I was already, I had 10 fantastic ideas, and the ideas just kept flowing. I would, I would create the strip and send it, create the strip and send it, keep going, left and right. 10 ideas later, everything comes to a complete halt. No more ideas. This was very unsettling to me. I had no idea that the idea train was that short. And in fact, more than short circuit, I was worried about my capacity to generate fresh ideas. Was that not unlimited? Was there a cap to this thing? That was my fear. So I tried all kinds of tricks to try to, you know, generate ideas. I would take nice long walks, thinking of nothing, waiting for the ideas to fall in. I would uh, read books, I would watch uh, movies, lots of showers. I was nice and clean, but no ideas. 
at this low point, when the pressure was on, I had to send, send Indian Express uh, more, more cartoon strips. Comes to me my, my professor, and my, my math professor and mentor in life, my life guru. Actually, he passed away last week. He, uh, he told me something fantastic. He told me, you have a deep well of ideas within you. And then he gave me the key. He said, to access this deep well of ideas, you need to be either deeply under pressure or deeply relaxed. Well, I knew all about pressure. That was not getting me anywhere. So I, I needed to very quickly go to this other side. So for the past 25 odd years, I've had this very strange habit. I would wake up early in the morning, make myself a fantastic great cup of tea, and I'd sit down to do a deep, long meditation to access the deep well of ideas, to see it rise up, bubbling up. And guess what? It actually worked. Not every day, not always, not very reliably, but frequently enough, in fact, to, to fund two years of short circuit until the year I came to the United States to go to, to, go to UCLA. Today I am fully entrenched in a lifestyle of creative endeavors, technology, education. And I realized that this pursuit of ideas had been very, very deliberately crafting a life and career for me in a trajectory of my own choosing. Seeing Short Circuit in the newspaper got a friend of mine, my best buddy, to get an idea. He's like, dude, you need to be in animation. A few, more, few years later, at the UCLA animation program, my professor gets an idea. You need to be doing 3D animation. That combines with my own ideas about technology, combines and mashes the two, and puts me on a path to game animation. And a few years later, working really long nights in games, hard deadlines, nasty um, pressures, and seeing my children rise up, my children grow up, I get this other idea. Wouldn't it be amazing to make games that are not just about blowing stuff up and more inspiring, more meaningful, more educational, God forbid? And a few years later, I get my final idea so far. As an entrepreneur, I get, I, I get this idea. I'd like to teach a class or two in, the, in a local college just to surround myself with fresh minds fresh ideas all the time. But these days, my ideas revolve around robots. Not, not this guy here, but, ro but robots, you know, the kinds that are supposed to take away our jobs, your jobs, in 15, 25 years from now, that kind. Wouldn't it be fantastic to have one idea that'll solve that problem for good? Ideas are potent, they are powerful, they are the fuel of creativity, they drive economies, they give you bursts of energy, they raise your spirit, they give you a fantastic outlook of life, and they shine a spotlight into the direction you and your talents ought to be taking yourself. And yet we come across times in life where we flat run out of ideas. I know a lot of friends, family, students that seem stuck, jaded, in a rut. Their imagination fails them. They don't know what to do. I walk up to them and of course I tell them, you know there's a deep well of ideas within you. <laughs> hmm, they're, they're in no mood for that. So, the deep well of ideas is a it's a personal journey. For me, it was through deep meditation. For you, it may be jogging, it may be working out, it could be listening to music, or watching a movie, or having a conversation among friends. Or it could be sitting in a coffee shop with a nice steaming mug of coffee and a blank piece of paper. Or it could be unplugging from it all. It's taking a wonderful walk in nature. 
And then there's a matter of ideas themselves. What are ideas? Where do they come from? What's that material? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. But I, ha but I have some clues. Ideas seem to be more like, to me, dreams. I can't pretend to be the creator of the dreams I see at night. Similarly, I cannot believe I'm the one creating these ideas. I simply stand witness to it as they come. My ideas and our ideas seem to come, they, they're not necessarily thought up. They just pop up from between the spaces between our thoughts or spaces between our words we speak even. Mystical, volatile, ephemeral, mysterious. And when these ideas do come, we need to catch them and put them down on paper. One idea a day, an idea a day, would attract more ideas. And these ideas, they can be creative, they can be inventive, they can be um, problem solving, they can be social. Ideas are ideas. Now, by the mere nature of ideas, they will not come when you want them to come. They have a mind of their own. So you need the, an idea journal alone won't be enough. Like for me, my best ideas are when I'm driving with my eyes on the street uh, or when I'm meditating with my eyes are closed. My idea journal is, no, no, uh, is nowhere. For a number of years, I actually had this interesting habit of having a nice notepad in the passenger seat of my car with a big pen and as I'm driving on the freeways in California with about 85 miles an hour, no, sorry, 65, <laughs> when an idea strikes, I would take the pad, put it on my lap, and scribble away. Is that a good idea? The cops didn't think so either. So we don't do that. So I have a better idea that I could offer you, and it's an all-time, real-time, always-on idea palace. What is an idea palace? An idea palace is a take on memory palaces, which is a memory, it's a note-taking technique that's been used for millennia, from the Greeks at least. So what is an idea palace? Well, it's a building that you are very familiar with physically in real life. It could be your, your parents' home, your, your apartment, it could be a school building, something you can close your eyes and visualize very carefully or very clearly, very specifically, how the, all the rooms are laid out, how the, how the, where the fireplace is, where all the spaces are, the stairs, the whole thing, the structure. You adopt one of these buildings as your idea palace. Now, when an idea strikes you, you visualize that idea as, an, as a specific object, and you place that idea in a, very deliberately in, in a certain part of your idea palace. For example, let's say you get an idea for an app, for an app, like I did a few weeks ago. I walked into a coffee shop wanting to do a bunch of work. I have my backpack. I want to sit down for six hours. Nope, not a single table. So as I'm walking out disgruntled, I get an idea. Wouldn't it be fantastic to have an app that simply posts the, the number of open tables in the coffee shops in the neighborhood? Great, so the moment I get that idea, what I do is I visualize a nice, large, steaming cup of coffee. It's about humongous, like a, like a cauldron size, brimmed with coffee. Place it on top of a tiny coffee table and take this weird, odd pair and place it visually, mentally, in the foyer of your idea palace so that when you open the door, you can see very clearly this weird thing. Let's hang on to that, that thought. Now, let's move on to another idea. As you're driving a car and you're thinking, you get an idea. I got to buy my dad a birthday gift, a nice pack of socks for his birthday. And so, as you're driving, you, without closing your eyes, of course, you just visualize that pair of socks, pack of socks, and you place it in the fireplace with the fire on. Now, there's a method to the madness, guys, because you see, the idea objects need to be a slightly absurd for it to stick in the idea palaces. In fact, I've got 20 years worth of ideas in my idea palaces. Three ide I, got, I got three. Three idea palaces all over the place. And I don't do much spring cleaning. It's a mess, guys, a mess. I'm tripping over ideas all the time. So, journals, idea palaces, 
what's the purpose of all this? Why are we talking about ideas? What's the big deal? I can give you two outcomes. One is the social outcome. What happens to society if people, more people, pursue their ideas fearlessly? The answers are pretty obvious. Great products are made, big problems are solved. But I'm interested in the other one. What happens to the individual that pursues his or her life pursuing ideas? You see, after the hundredth idea, a certain pattern of your ideas emerge. You'll begin to notice a certain pattern of the kinds of ideas that you seem to dig up and the kinds of ideas that seem to attract people to you. You see, your ideas are a true reflection of yourself. It unveils your true nature. It, in fact, shines a spotlight into the direction that you should be taking your talents towards. So what about the robots? I think we should wrap this up with one idea against these robots. You know the robots that are supposed to take away our jobs. So here's my pitch. You know the robots are coming. They're going to do a fantastic job cleaning, cooking, driving, machining, policing, teaching. They'll even make a fantastic cup of coffee and they'll place it in front of you without a single spill. And that's where they'll stop. You know one thing they will not be able to do? Get an idea. Because ideas are a very human enterprise. It is what makes us human. In fact, it is our big talent. That is the big deal about, about us that we cannot forget. It is our last stand against robot, robots, AI, or any future technologies that, seem, that may threaten us, at least for a long time. And in that long time, I believe we'll have plenty of time to fill millions of idea books with fantastic ideas through which we can reshape the future. And so I say that we should go out and go discover our deep wells of ideas within each of us, catch one idea a day, and run with it. <laughs>